course, back in those days when you could do that, you didn't have nearly uh, the debt and deficits that you do today, right? We have a trillion dollar deficit we're looking forward to this year. We're having likely trillion dollar deficits for years on out. Uh, and it's getting worse. It's not getting better. To the capitalist pig uh, hedge fund uh, giant, Jonathan Honig, what he makes of all of that. What do you make of all of that? Ah, oh, Neil. We... When you see anything critical of the president or this administration, I mean, you know what it's like. The, the Twitter sphere jumps down your throat. Sad. But you've always said, uh, you know, uh, but you, you, you always said it's not bl blue or green. It's it, it, not blue or red. It's green. And if you're looking at the green, you have to be concerned about these deficits. I mean, th there's been a, billion, a trillion dollars added to the national debt in just the first year and a half of the presidency, and it's on track to double in the next 10 years. So it's just tough to make the argument that the GOP really are the party of fiscal conservatism that they've been at least for most of my lifetime in the past. You know what's so weird? I, I, and well, you know, people pick and choose where they see or life through the prism or their bias. Assume we've never said anything good about Donald Trump or what he's done, or for that matter, that we never said anything bad about Barack Obama. I understand how this goes, so I'll accept politics and, and the way people <laughs> see life through that. But you and I have been talking through, I think, Democratic and Republican administrations alike. And of course, you're a lot younger than I am for a long, long time, and and it's getting a lot, lot worse. And I always worry about the time we just can't keep pushing this forward. And wh whether an uptick in rates does it, a dra dramatic uptick, or some other crisis, but it's not going to keep going like this. Yeah, I mean, well, Neil, I, I, what I fear, I mean, what, what's helped us thus far is what they always say, the full faith and credit of the U.S. dollar. And, you know, we've seen the dollar actually rise. So there is a confidence still that the U.S. dollar is really the currency you want to hold worldwide. What worries me is now with this tariff talk, because, Neil, what ends up happening is when we buy less goods from overseas, foreign investors have less dollars to then turn around and buy our debt, to buy our equity, to invest back in our country. So if you're looking what the tipping point could be, I mean, I can only think back to 1987, Neil, when it was some words from James Baker about the U.S. dollar back Remember in that, that era that, yeah. that, that uh, t tipped off the 87 crash. I'm not a Cassandra, but I worry now with this debt and deficit rising and the trade weakening, that tends to be bad news for stocks and the economy writ large. Yeah, and remember the seeds were planted for that with the Plaza Accord and all of that other nonsense that was yeah. before you were born, young man. But having, oh, said, yeah. I don't remember that having all. said all of that, <laughs> I'm worried about what... Is there a way to play this? I know this sounds crass, but if you expect these deficits to continue piling up, uh, you expect trade friction to continue existing because I don't see any side blinking anytime soon. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Then that's a tough field to play. What do you do? Yeah. It's, it, well, it's, it's, it's infuriating, Neil. And as you pointed out, I mean, it's, it's not red or blue, it's green. And during the Obama administration, for example, we were criticizing the stimulus because every investor had to figure out how is this going to affect the market. And what I fear is now, whether you run a company with one other person or tens of thousands of other people, CEOs around the country now are having to talk with their lawyers. How do we circumvent tariffs? How do we get around these arbitrary restrictions? Tremendous amount of money and values and wealth lost as a result. So maybe that's, once again, the tipping point. Once so we really see prices start to rise and businesses big and small get affected, maybe that's when the message gets through. What about technology? It's kind of been impervious to this. Um, do, you, do you look at that as a sort of a safe place? Or actually, yeah. if it gets worse with China, probably the last place. But how do you play that? Yeah, well, Neil, and, you know, back in, in the late 1990s, and, you know, we could always find historical comparisons, but we saw very much the same thing in that it became only a few stocks that were really holding the broad market up. It was, at that point, it was Sun Microsystems, Oracle, I mean, some of the names you don't even, aren't even around anymore. Certainly, Cisco was one of those. That's very much the same situa switch, situation we have now. If you strip out those fangs, those Facebook and Amazon and Netflix, the rest of the market's actually been quite flat for the better part of a year. So that's what's holding the whole market up. And I, I think it's positive. I mean, these are the companies that are innovating, that are pulling our economy forward. But if they stumble, to quote Neil Patrick Cavuto, Katie, bar the door. So when will you have to bar that door? <laughs> you know, that's like the, the big trillion plus dollar question, right? Yeah.
Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's, you know, Jesse Livermore Neal from the book Reminiscences sure. of a Stock Operator has a wonderful line. He says, there's a time to go long, a time to go short, and a time to go fishing. So at least for me right now, now's a great time to, to get one's financial house in order. You know, we know investors have a tremendous amount of consumer debt, credit card debt, not right. far from its all-time high. So if it was my money, or I'll tell you what I'm doing with my money is, once again, getting that financial house in order, now is a better time, as good a time as any, I think, to get that six months worth of living expenses in the bank, in the, safe in the kitty. If you could get that far, you'd be better off than probably half of most Americans. It's a great goal. It's interesting. I still can't see you fishing, though. I could see you going to a restaurant and ordering fish. That's it. But that, that's it. The, the whole fishing thing and just waiting and waiting, I don't know. That's, <laughs> that's not the Jonathan Onig I know. I mean, no, no. Nor is it me. I have people for that, Neil. Yeah, yeah exactly. All right.